three battles in one year. Let's access some heritage with the story of the fearless, swashbuckling, heroic Royal Navy Captain Robert Faulkner. In 1793, Robert Faulkner became a captain and was given the command of a 16-gun sloop by the name of HMS Zebra. The ship was attached to the fleet, the expeditionary force, that was to attack French holdings in the West Indies. The islands to be attacked were Martinique, St. Lucia, and Guadeloupe. At Martinique, Captain Faulkner and the crew of the HMS Zebra were tasked with entering the bay at Fort de France and attacking Fort St. Louis on the edge. Faulkner was aggressive and moved his ship almost point blank with the batteries of Fort St. Louis, surprising the French through driving them from their guns. Then he jumped onto his boats sailed over onto the beach, and then stormed the fort. Faulkner, writing a letter to his mother, remembered that he had his belly box on his waist, which is a wooden box with a leather cover, and had holes in the, in the wood where he could have his cartridges for his flintlock pistol. So he had his flintlock pistol, which was a sea service pistol, which you can buy at militaryheritage.com and he had his sword in his other hand he charged up towards the fort he took a bullet in the belly but his belly box was there smashing the wood knocking him down but he continued on bravely with his men and stormed the fort successfully it was such an amazing view of this dramatic view of them attacking that as the HMS Zebra left the bay towards the flagship of the fleet, the Bourne, the men were screaming and cheering at him and the Admiral had the band on the flagship play, Here the Conquering Hero Comes. After the conquest of Martinique and St. Lucia, the fleet set sail for this island, Guadeloupe. Again, Faulkner is tasked with attacking in another fort, this time by foot. He is at night on April 12th, 1794, Faulkner and the crew of his new ship, HMS Blanche, are tasked with climbing up almost a perpendicular hill to attack a French fort by the name of Fort Fleur de Epais. They climb up this surface for several hours. They finally reach the top of the of the seas of the fortification. Colla Faulkner and his crew are winded. They collapse into the ground and just to get a rest. But at that point, a French soldier and a French officer attack Faulkner. Faulkner parries the bayonet of the soldier, but the officer, the French officer, jumps him, knocks him to the ground with his arms around his neck, pushes him to the ground. Faulkner has a sword in his hand, trying to fight him off, but the French officer knocks the sword out of his hand and grabs Faulkner's sword, while on top of Faulkner, pressed to the ground, the French officer raises the uh, sword, Faulkner's sword, to run him through. And just at that point, a sailor stabs the French officer with his pike and saves Faulkner's life. From that, they charged into the fort and was hand-to-hand -hand fighting until the British prevailed and Fort Fleur de Pé was in British hands and eventually the rest of the island fell to the British crown. Faulkner cruises these waters towards late 1794, trying to bottle up or catch any French ship trying to escape Pointe à Pit, which was the main port at Guadeloupe. Eventually, a 38-gun 
French frigate by the name of Le Pic, or the Pike, attempts to run Faulkner's blockade. While Faulkner's 32 cannon vessel, the HMS Blanche, is outgunned, our intrepid hero engages the French foe in a single ship duel off the small island of La Desirade. For five hours in the tossing waters off eastern Guadeloupe, the two adversaries jostled for an advantageous position. At one point in the battle, the French ship changed direction and got tied up with Faulkner's ship. The bow spit, or the front part of the ship, the extended part, was over the deck of Faulkner's ship on a raking angle, as the Navy would say. Faulkner jumps down and starts latching the bow spit of the French ship to his ship because he wants the French ship to be stuck in this position. So he hops down, he's trying to tie it off because if he can tie it off, then all of the guns of the French of the British ship can be pointed towards the hull of the French ship and the French cannot answer because it's their bow is only pointing. It's called again a raking position. Unfortunately for Faulkner, the French musketmen on the top of the ship fire and kill Faulkner. Despite the tragic loss of their gallant captain, the crew finished what Faulkner had begun, with the French frigate helplessly exposed to the British guns. Faulkner's crew mercilessly pounds the enemy into submission. When the smoke cleared, the French had lost nearly half their crew in casualties. But it was a bittersweet victory, for the daring Faulkner was no more. With an entire army destroyed in the West Indies, Britain looked for heroes. And Faulkner was just that, a hero to the British people. A monument was raised in the St. Paul's Cathedral in London, which still can be seen today. And now you know of his story, lest we forget.